Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Um, we're back with quick hits. Um, we're going to get into uh, Nala Inouye's uh, resume and his legacy. And uh, we're going to kind of rate where he's at now. Like, he's one of the great little men of all time. Is he, is he? He's 29, so he's in his prime. That's late in his prime, but he's still in his prime for a little man. Uh, he's probably got three more years at the top. I would say by 32, he's going to, you know, at his best, by 32, he's going to start to show his age, I would think. Um, that's traditionally, not, not that he still can't be great, but he's going to start declining. Um, so he's got a couple of years left um, at the top, which is good for five fans. Um, but we want to get into it and, and see where he rates, see where he ranks, where we'd put him all time. Um, so we want to go over his resume. Uh, before we do that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, all forms of social media. Uh, quick Hits comes at you every day, twice a day. Not anymore. comes at you every day, 8, 10 minutes a day. I keep you updated on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Please also subscribe to the Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to uh, Autism Research and Recovery. That's Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All right, let's get into to, to in a way. Um, so, and this is going to come off. As harsh because I I think in a way he's obviously a Hall of Famer. He's obviously one of the great little men of all time. Uh, he comes up from 105, 108, skipped 112, went to 115, skipped all the good fighters at 115, then went to 118. And uh, now he's cleared out 118. Uh, first, I want to get into ESPN. Their kind of love affair that they showed with in a way on Tuesday's telecast. It was a good performance by in a way. He fought Paul Butler. Okay, Paul Butler fought Manny Rodriguez a bunch of years ago. He missed weight by about five pounds, didn't even try to make weight, came in grossly overweight to try to have some kind of advantage over Manny Rodriguez because he obviously couldn't compete with Manny Rodriguez straight up. Um, he did that. Manny Rodriguez absolutely blew him out and destroyed him anyway. That's Manny Rodriguez. That's someone who I think the world of I think is a good fighter that in a way already destroyed, right? In a way, destroyed uh, Manny Rodriguez. So that's who Paul, That's who he was in with, with Paul Butler. Paul Butler was someone trying to get an unfair advantage by not making weight just to compete with Manny Rodriguez and couldn't. Look, he won a belt. Fair square was a vacant belt. Paul Butler got a belt. If anyone wants to collect all the belts at 118, he's got to go through Paul Butler. But they're making this out like, look at this. Paul Butler's not even on his level. He's not. Not all champions in boxing are built the same, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not discrediting Paul Butler, but like, who has Paul Butler ever beaten? Paul Butler got a world title by beating Jonas Sultan. Jonas Sultan, that's who he beat to get a world. Jonas Sultan was 18 and five. He's 18 and six now after the loss. And his best win was uh, at the Garden over Carlos Caraballo. That, 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 that's who he beat. <laughs> he, 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 the guy lost to Enquejas, right? Uh, he, he, he lost to some guys you've never heard of. Uh, John Sol. That's who he beat to get a world title. So, I mean, uh, no shade to Paul Butler, but they keep saying, like, look, Paul Butler's not in that class. Yes, Paul Butler is not in the league. Uh, uh, even Manny Rodriguez alone. Anyway, put that aside, okay? Um, so I, I didn't get that, first of all. Yes, Paul Butler's not a great fighter. I, he somehow got a world title. He's one of the worst guys to ever hold a world title. Uh, it's, go look at his resume. Go look at his performances. He's not that type of fighter. Um, let's go to the beginning. He's got, um, in, in a way, became a, a, a world champion 
really early in his career. Um, he, he was blowing guys out. He won. He's won basically every fight by by, uh, by knockout. He's still got a, you know a ninety percent knockout ratio. Uh, but he won his world titles at one, two, three, four, five, six fights into his career. Is that right? Against uh, Adrian Hernandez, blew him out in six rounds. No, yeah, I was at one weight. Um, and we're gonna go through these names now, right? Um, yeah, one weight. That particular time, this is back 2013, 2014. You know, those divisions weren't getting a lot of shine back in the day outside of Japan, outside of Asia. Uh, he he went from 108 to 115. And he went up and he, and he destroyed Navarez in 2014, uh, December 2014 in Japan. Uh, knocked him down twice in the first round, twice more in the second round. Absolutely destroyed Navarro. Navarro is a legend. Navarro should be in the Hall of Fame. Okay. Navarro was at the end of his rope and not, you know, but he, whatever. He destroyed Navarro. That's a really good win. He beat David uh, Carmona, a couple other names. Uh, then December, uh, two years later, December uh, 2016, he fights Kohi Kono. That's the next best name on his resume. Really good fighter. Again, aging. Uh, he destroys him in six round, wins every round, absolutely destroys him. Uh, that's the WBO super flyweight title. Um, he goes on. He, he fights on the uh, the HBOs, the, uh, the you know their super flies. He beats guys like Antonio uh, Nieves. Then we see him. Um, he, he destroys Jamie McDonald on uh, on ESPN's app. Right, that that was early on in their streaming phase. Uh, the ESPN Plus app in 2018. Uh, he destroys Jamie McDonald. He uh, destroys Juan uh, Carlos Payana. And then he destroys Manny Rodriguez. Um, then he steps in with Donaire late 2019, just before the pandemic. He has this all world, you know, brawl with uh, Donaire, which I, I, I thought he had won wider. Uh, he wins that. It's almost, he's out of the ring almost here due to the pandemic. He then destroys Jason Maloney, uh, destroys Michael Desmarinas. Uh, Diapen, and then he fights Donaire again, destroys Donaire in two, and then he beat Paul Butler. Who do you not see on that list? And it's a good resume. I'm not knocking his resume. resume. It's a good resume. It's a very good resume. Who do we not see on the list, though, right? So sometimes it's not as important as who you beat. It's who you don't fight. Who don't we see on that list? So he, he, he went from 108, skip 112, 115. So he's not a big 115 pounder. He could have stayed at 115. But uh, he, after uh, he fought Nieves and he fought one more time in Japan, he fought, uh, I, I'm not even going to try to say the name, he, he fought a French fighter and, and destroyed him. Remember, this was on the ESPN app. Uh, it was brand new. This is late 2017. Um, and then went up in 2018 to 118. This is the prime of his career. He's 25 years old at this point. Who do you not see on this list? There's no Estrada. There's no Sorung Vasai. There's no Chocolatito. There's no Ioka. There's no Nietes. He skipped the best division in the sport. All the legends in that division, he skipped all of them. Like if, if Terrence Crawford did that, if Terrence Crawford skipped Thurman, skipped Spence, skipped Pacquiao, or skipped Porter, skipped Danny Garcia, and then went straight to 118. I went up straight to 154 and won some belts. You'd be like, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. You just skipped all of those names at 115. At, you know, at 147. If, if Crawford, what, what, you know, Fort Horn, Fort uh, Kelbrook, Fort Benavidez, and then went up to 154, and Khan, and then went up to 154, and won a belt at 154. You'd be like, wait a second. There's this loaded division at 47 that you just skipped. What, what happened there? What happened to all those names? That is what he did. That, that's what Inouye did. Inouye was in his prime in the best division in the sport. I just listed those legends. All of those guys. And we can put Quadras in there too. No Quadras, no Estrada, no Sorok Versailles, no Chocolatino, no Ioka, no Nietes. Didn't find any of those guys. Any of those great Hall of Fame little men. He skipped every one of them. All in their prime, all in his prime. Didn't find a single one of them. Went up to 118 for no reason. 
No big fights until he got to, to, to Donaire. He wanted to fight in the 118 tournament. Why? Why not fight Quadras, Estrada, or Rung Vizacho, Tito Okanid? It's not like he was a massive 115 pounder who couldn't make the weight. He had just come up from 108. And yeah, I give him credit for fighting in different weight classes, but fight the best at 115. He didn't fight. I just gave you the six best names at 115. He didn't fight a single one of them. Look, he's a whole famer, and he's probably the best pound for pound fighter in the sport. I still have Usyk as my number one pound for pound, right? The number one pound for pound guy in the sport is between two people. It's between Inoue and it's between Crawford. I mean, it's between Inoue and it's between Usyk. Inoue, it's not, it's not Crawford. It's Inoue or it's Usyk. That, that's the best pound for pound fighter in the sport. And, and, and you know, the, the right answer is probably Inoue. But it's so hard for me to put him there. When he skipped the entire weight class, the, the top six names in the weight class, he didn't fight a single one of them and then went up to 118 and acted like he did something more special. No, no. Like, think of that. Like, what if any of the welterweights did that? What if the lightweights did that? What, what, what if this, I don't want to fight Ryan, I don't want to fight Tyke, I don't want to fight Teal, I don't want to fight Devin, I'm just going to skip the weight class entirely. That's what he did, right? It doesn't get... Uh, it doesn't get enough attention because he's knocking everyone out and everyone loves to watch him and he's exciting. And he's, he skipped, he was fighting in the best weight class in the sport, which is still to this day, the best weight. Class. You can see Paul Butler probably outweighed about eight, 10 pounds. He could make 115. He could, he can make 115, but he's not going to do it. And it's too late now. So run beside is gone. So Tito is a, a shell of himself. Um, Estrada is still good. Um, I oak is past his prime. Nietes is past. So that, opportunity to fight all those great guys are gone it's gone so again when we're rating him he is an all-time great fighter it was an all-time great fighter he's a hall of famer it has to go down on his resume that he skipped those six names didn't fight a single one of them not a single one of them and he's got he's got good with kono uh nieves uh he's got good names don't air twice what about those names? Why? And no one said anything. Like I said, what if you know, Crawford does this, right? And everyone destroys Crawford. But Crawford at least fought Porter, right? You got Thurman, you got Danny, you got Pacquiao. You, at least he fought Porter. And if he goes to another weight class, which he may, eh, you know, what are you going to do, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to tarnish his legacy, though, isn't it? But at least he fought one of the guys. In a way, he didn't fight any of them. Not, he didn't even fight Ashton Palikta. He fought none of those guys. And then went up to 118. No, no Josh Franco. He could still be there. You say that 115, he could fight Ben Rodriguez. He could still make 115 and still fight the, the, those guys at 115. But he didn't do it. And now he's talking about going up some more. Like, instead of fighting Stephen Fulton, why? It was, he's, I don't think he's going to win that fight, by the way. It's that's too big. Fulton's a huge guy at 122, and I just think that's too much. It's too big. Um, but why why not fight? Why didn't you fight any of those guys at 115? And, and when we go through his resume, and when we're rating him all time, that's gotta come into play big time. Is that he skipped the six best guys he could have fought? The six best guys he could have fought. Let me know what you think. Uh, does this get enough attention? Do we ignore it too much? It's because he is a monster and he does destroy everyone and he's probably the best fighter in the sport pound for pound right now. But let me know what you think. Thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, quick hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, please also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is December 18th, 2022, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3 Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.